Hello and welcome to the another season of the Beyond the Score podcast. Uh, we bring you the first episode of 2022 to this season straight from our studios. Uh, in this podcast, we bring you the views and the opinion of those in the news brought to you by Khel Now. I am your host Ashish Negi. Uh, today we have with us very special guest. Uh, considering what's going on in Indian football, I think it's it's important that we you know we hear the views and opinions of Mr. Sajid Parvakar, who is currently uh, president of Football Delhi. Uh, earlier known as Delhi Football Association, uh, Saji has worked in various roles in Indian football, starting with you know uh, All India Football Federation, working with national team, and he also went till FIFA as a, a Central and South Asia Regional Officer. He has worked in various other projects in Indian football, and currently he is the president of Football uh, Football Delhi. And also considering now, I think many people feel that he should be the front runner for the. next aff uh, president election we will take all his views and you know about the same what's going on will he going to stand for that i think i'm not sure he's going to tell us today but i think he is definitely one of the fan favorites considering the kind of cv and portfolio he has in his in his bag uh, you know working with national team fifa now state federation so he knows each and every uh, you know level of development in football is required from grassroots to the top at the at the fifa level Sadi welcome to the show and uh, welcome to the studio also thank, thank you for you. coming in no no my pleasure ashish is always you know happy to be here and uh, you know all the best and uh, in this podcast people generally when they do podcast they straight away go to the topics you know which they want to speak i have kept a format i wanted to speak about your life you know because there are many people who watch or listen these podcast uh, on various platform they also want to get into football you know how we can get into at the level of working with fifa for example so i always have given the platform to the, uh, the to my guest to share the opinion their their you know how they get into football earlier so uh, i am sure you have played football at a level uh, and then you had an interest in football so can you can you, and of course people have read your book i think uh, we have shared lots of uh, detail in, in that book also but tell us you know how you came into football and was your earlier life all about and as you come from football crazy state kerala which many people now started getting that you know you are from kerala considering you are working in football delhi ha huh, i'm really fortunate in that way uh, to experience football in different parts of the country uh, it's like a born in kerala brought up in bengal and uh, since my five i was five i moved to bengal and it was a remote place in bengal where i brought up and the whole schooling was done there and uh, since the age of 8 i started uh, to football and uh, the reason was very simple because football was the most popular sport and uh, the ground the football pitch was 500 meter away from my home and uh, uh it was like a natural attraction to the game and then uh, our seniors the you know all uh, near neighbors uh, encouraged us and they given us the opportunity to play but it was a seasonal game at that point of time we will play april to august or maximum september end and then you know we will play either cricket volleyball and all indigenous games So the whole the great part is that we from the very beginning we could expose to football and i'm so fortunate that i could continue that as my part of my life and then got the opportunity to play for the local club that's milan sangha and when i was 14 half 15 i got the opportunity to play with the senior team and then we used to you know travel across in the tractor the tea garden used to provide us a tractor or we will cycle you know 10 kilometers 20 kilometers to play the match and then we our matches were also witnessed by huge crowd and it was you know they will charge money to witness our games so that when i look back i can't really imagine you know how uh, the atmosphere to there it was and then yeah then is 18 19 i moved out uh because i thought i want i want to be a player and there the opportunities were less and then somebody suggested why don't you go to gwalior uh you know, there you can study as well as you get a better exposure you can train and maybe you will have a better career so because only thing i wanted in my life was football you know to be a player and that's how 
landed in Gwalior and then when I landed in Gwalior, realized that, oh, you know, I'm so backward in terms of technical ability, in terms of performance, because nobody taught us uh, the basics in the right way. But then, you know, I could work hard with the support of the, uh, the coach there and the seniors. Then I, in three years time, I broke into the main team and which, you know, even the seniors were surprised how fast I improved and all that. So that way, you know, I was, I played for the university team and then I got even the camp selection for the Santosh Trophy. But then after a friendly match uh, with a army team, there I uh, played basketball three aside and in the basketball game I got injured very badly the, my ACL torn and that was the last day being as a player then I tried to come back but then it never happened yeah so that's the early you know days of my football and then then the, after my injury I realized you know what I'll do uh, and then I thought okay I have to be you know, I, what I love, I should do. But then I never had, uh, you know, say a clear path because nobody could guide us at that time and we could not see also. Uh, everybody, what I saw at that time or experience was either you become a coach or a teacher or you are a director in some government department or in a university or a college. That was the, you know, opportunities. But then I was never interested in all that. But I thought, okay, let's focus uh, to build myself, uh, educate myself, get, you know, you know, just invest in that, get the, well, then I completed my PhD there. And, and during the PhD, uh, my topic of study was uh, why Indian football is not doing well? What are the reasons? What are the gaps? And uh, that really, you know, shaped me to get to the better understanding of Indian football. What are its problems? So in that process, I met more than 300, 350 individuals across the country, like from Goa to Calcutta to Bombay, Kerala, you know, I traveled for two years. And, and during that time, I met ex-players, you know, coaches, current players, then journalists, and then administrators, club officials, referees, everyone. And then you know, that given me the uh, complete kind of a, uh, understanding why we are like what we were at that time. And uh, it has given me a lot of insight. Uh, and my purpose of doing that study was to build myself, not to, you know, as a say, yeah, part of a say okay do, you are doing a phd but you know phd everybody gets in a smaller topic also and then i was also fortunate i could get the scholarship fellowship from the ugc both junior and senior fellowship so that way everything was you know funded by that and uh, and uh, yeah four years it took and then i completed my phd and uh, yes I, it given me a lot of insight knowledge understanding and then what you do after that? I saw nothing there is. So then the when I was doing PhD and injured myself, I started also coaching. And the good thing was that the university, the college given me the opportunity to coach. And we I coached two teams. Our university team won third place in the All India University for the first yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. And then the women's team, I got the opportunity. They also got the third place. So that given me also confidence, okay, I can also you know, do coaching. And then when I completed my PhD, I was looking for an opportunity either with the club or with the federation. And then in the private, there were no opportunities to work where which I wanted. But then I ended up as a coach in the Chandigarh Football Academy. And I will just take a time here to viewer or listeners to understand that Chandigarh Football Academy not might heard in recent time. But uh, I think to give an idea, I'm talking about five years, six years from now, 2015-16, Anjit Thapa, Dipinder Negi, Pushanjit, uh, these kids were, you know, kind of uh, uh, putting Indian under-16 to the Asia map when they qualified for the AFC Asian Cup, if you remember correctly. 
these all many of these kids came from Chandigarh Football Academy, and that batch, uh, I think Gautam Ghosh was the Indus Indus 16 coach, and they played wonderful football. And Andrew Thapa is the I think the biggest example of the Chandigarh Football Academy. Of course, they not, might not be now that big right now, but I think. That uh, 10 years from 2004 to 2015, they produced many, many Indian internationals. So I think that's all about Chandigarh Food Academy. I think you carry forward now. <laughs> yeah, the, so I read, I was in Delhi attending Subroto Cup matches you know, at Ambedkar Stadium. And then I read in the newspaper that uh, Chandigarh administration is planning to launch or launch an academy, uh, which was JFR Jacob was the General J.F.R. Jacob was the governor of Punjab and administrator Chandigarh and he was a really passionate man for football because wherever he was, he, he you know, earlier he started the same in Goa as well. I read about and then I called somebody in Chandigarh whom I knew. I said, oh, I want to be part of this and I, I think I might contribute. So then uh, the person who was an uh, Arjuna Wadi, he is no more. Uh, then he immediately said, okay, why don't you come to Chandigarh? Uh, I'll introduce you and then see what they... And then I went to Chandigarh, then offer myself. Uh, they were not ready to take me, but then I said, you know, I'll work free. Yeah, uh, you know, I'll devote my time I'll, and I stayed with him. And then I offered my services to the Chandigarh Football Academy. Just they started and they... The this, first is, batch, this is which year, by the way? 2000 August. August, August, yeah. August, so that's something 2004 to 2015 they produced. Yes. I think Saji will of course going to tell us about all these players, but they produced many players who played for India. So I think yes. this is the early year when the academy was getting set up, set up at Chandigarh. Yeah. yeah. So August 2000, you know, this was uh, launched, and luckily I also went there. And end of August I joined, and it was completely you know, offered myself free, and you know, and it was like really a great platform at that time. Because the way we could set up structure and fortunate part was Harjinder Singh, the former India captain and uh, one of the best midfielders India has produced, he was the coach and then we could gel well. And then after three months, three and a half months, you know, they were given me a contract. Uh, the contract was, you know, was just a paper, I would say, you know, it was nothing where could I meet my, even the rent of where I was staying. Chandigarh is a costly yes. city by the yes. way. <laughs> yes, but the good thing was I was really enjoying because that was like, you know, uh, like the, the knowledge I had and that platform what I got, you know, I could work with those kids, which they were 10, 9, 10, 11 maximum kids. And within three years, what happened, uh, we could put a great structure and we always focused on their education as well, very balanced approach. Uh, there were challenges because in a government structure, we'll always have you know, different kind of challenges. But we tried our best to give the best to the kids, who, the players, the trainees, uh, with all kind of facilities uh, within the given uh, limitations. But uh, the good thing was in 2003, uh, our two players played for under uh, 13 India team, that which went to Nepal. And then uh, 2004, I myself took uh, eight kids from the academy. Uh, the trial happened for under 14 team in Goa. Uh, eight, out of eight, six got selected in the India under 14 team. And then everybody started asking, oh, from where these kids are? And one of them was Pawan, who was a goalkeeper. And he was multi-talented at that time itself. He had a good foot uh, and he played. And then there were boys, but then all of them you know, vanished. Uh, some of them played for I-League. But then the good thing was that it given a sound platform. Those kids, you know, many of them were not very talented. But because of our training, because of our you know, the care we could, uh, t you know, give them, uh, that uh, the knowledge we could provide them, so they, they stood out. And that's how they, you know, out of those maybe 200 uh, players came from all over the country, you know, they could be, you know, be, be part of 18. No, it's a big achievement. Because this is the time when uh, there were hardly any res residential football academy in India. So Tata Football Academy, of course, there is one. Chandigarh Football Academy is the two. 
I can't remember any such. There were some CSR projects of the big, big companies. I will not count those into it, but I'm talking about football specific. Uh, a TFA success we all aware about and uh, Chandigarh Football Academy might not be uh, that famous among the Indian football fans, but I was following very keen when I started looking into India for very seriously and considering the batch of Thapas, you know, they came from because Dehradun, the Uttarakhand doesn't have any club or any academy as such. The majority of Uttarakhand players used to go that route only from Chandigarh Football Academy, they go to the I League or ISL later part. So I think uh, that's, I think that played important role to, because uh, playing football in Kolkata, in Goa, in Kerala, in Bangalore, in Northeast, it still is a is an option. Or the clubs there, you can go stay at home, go and it, on day to train with your clubs. For say place at Himachal Pradesh or even Uttarakhand or other places where don't have any club, what can they do? So I think that's where the TFAs and you know even for Northeast that time doesn't have many clubs. You know that's where the TFAs and CFAs have come into picture and help these. Players to come into, you know, we know all about Sukhrata Paul, Gauramangi Singh coming from these academy setup. Yeah, carry on, sorry. Yeah, so that uh, what uh, the focus brought to CFA at that time because six players from one academy is a, you know, I never thought that will happen because we thought, okay, at the end, maybe one or two players because, you know, if the players coming from across the country, it is not that. You are only getting from few pockets to get six players. Wow, you know, that's a, one of the biggest achievement. What I would say in my life uh, to see that happening, and that's because it happened because you know, we have we could work with a lot of dedication, sincerity, and uh, you know, we had a program which really made these players stand out. Uh, and then what happened? Uh, after that, I approached AFF that I want to be part of the federation. And that time, it was like you can call directly president you know, and he could take your call. <laughs> and I, when I look, think now, it really looks, you know, it's like a unrealistic that a guy who has no influence, you can reach out to a president. Now, you know, I, I being a president, I can't reach out to a president. <laughs> Uh, so therefore, that was the difference. I could, you know, I called him. I said, you know, I'm working in football and this is what I uh, did and uh, I want to come and meet you. Okay, then he said, uh, you, know, you whenever you come to Delhi, uh, you just drop us. Uh, and can you tell the name of the president also to the people? Yeah, he, it was, he's, uh, he was um, you know, Priranjan Das Munshi. Yeah. Uh, he was the president uh, of AIFF since I think uh, 1989, I believe. Yeah, uh, he was still the president with Puffer Patel success. Yes. Was success, success, so, success, success, and uh, you know, I never thought at that time itself, I had the courage even to go and you know, call him. And he, he picking the call and not once. I might have called him say seven, eight times and he picked five times. And you know, that is what the accessibility is required. And uh, we, maybe he might not have done the great work, but then at least he given me that. <laughs> you know, if he would not have picked up, picked the call, I might not have the courage to even go to his office and present myself. So that is where you know, I feel very fortunate. And it happened. And then you know, I could put my case across. And they took six months to decide. And then ultimately they said, okay. What is the role offered to you by AFF, by the way? Uh, at that time, they offered me as a uh, assistant director for youth development because, you know, of my credentials yeah. Yeah. as a player. But then when the, I started. Was there any youth development that time at AFF? No, when I started working, you know, then I was doing everything. You know, like say we had only five, six people in the office in Goa. And uh, and then they the first thing was they to they you know the best thing uh, they straight away sent me to AFC for a one youth uh, development, development course, course yeah. which was which given me a uh, another opportunity exposure where I could you know differentiate uh, way whether we are inferior or superior or what is our level and that has given me a lot of uh, uh, say confidence that we are not anyway inferior uh, compared to uh, others. But what we need is the exposure, uh, the opportunity. And there, what I did, uh, the AFC asked me to make a presentation on what India should do. 
and you know whole night i sat to make that presentation because I, you know afc telling me to do that and it also surprised me i didn't had even laptop so i ha- i borrowed the laptop from one of the staff and they were so you know nice to you know, gesture to give that also and whole night i worked maybe i slept for one hour and then i made a presentation and then what happened when i come came back i joined afc oh, aff and then after one month they got they sent a letter saying that you know we want to appoint shaji in the technical committee of afc and oh that i never knew this letter came okay i never knew this letter came till when yeah, somebody asked you know from uh, you know afc itself uh, oh, did you get this kind of i said no i have we got you know a contrary this that you know somebody else will be nominated i said fine no but then my my point of telling is that like you know they recognized which which is i think itself a great achievement yeah right? great and achievement the, yeah because and i was no one considering your background you coming from i think because we have seen in this indian football in football uh, the association games you know the, the influence people used uh, the connections they used to get into these positions and i think it's very important uh, we are in 2022 now that that accessibility as you're talking about there should be uh, as we're going through the the coas and appointment of the committee from supreme court the, the house need to be get clean uh, i think another thing is that you know uh, there should be way for accountability for people there not just president not just general secretary i think uh, people have to see that uh, aff as a body is not run by the president and general secretary it's, it's the people there their departments you know uh, and these departments should held into the accountability because they are on the salaries uh, uh, to give an example i think president doesn't take salary right so i think people who are paid salaries they should be held more accountable you know for the work they have been doing even in the league or the women's football or the youth football or national team department and i think um, and the accessibility i'm talking about there should be some kind of scrutiny over them and if just like a private body if somebody is not working i think they should be moved on and you can always hire the fresh talent or the more deserving people from the market so i think hopefully uh, let's see that that will happen and uh, how for how many years you worked with the iff in that yeah. period see i worked for 5 years i was a head of national team and head of development and uh, i was handling the vision asia project when it started so uh, uh, you were at that period when stephen constein also came to india right yeah in the first 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 stint yeah, when when he first came to india he was already the coach Uh, then you then I joined then I also was handling the national team and then I continued for whole 5 years and that to the whole national team from youth to women to everyone yeah. and that that was a phase also when indian football started doing something good in terms of the national team uh, you know work the kind of tours and everything the exposure was more for the national team so uh, have you got a chance to work with say coaching staff also plan the you know routine or schedule of the see, we are, we struggled with friendlies nowadays that's a major another question i want to ask you know is it tough to organize friendlies by the way no absolutely not see because the federation what happens is when you are in federation you are in the right direct network with 211 countries yeah you don't need an agent the problem is We, so why do our federation need agent nowadays i don't know because that's really surprises me because when you have an agent they will always take you to somewhere where their interest is because we what we need is we need to work with our interest what is our interest we should get the right team at the right time and with the right you know values and which would enhance our competitiveness and which would be not like a tick the box okay you have done a friendly no just playing nepal maybe again a yeah, few more uh, times absolutely because see what we we should be knowing in advance in two years two years plan we should have for the friendlies itself because and if you want to play with us that was team, 2004 we had 2022 we still don't know who are playing next and that's the major google search trend in india for in terms of indian football when the indian football team going to play next or who are the opponents so i think that's I, i of course i knew about these that it's organizing for friendly is not tough because i have worked with the uh, various people in europe uh, with federations and everything and they even 
there's a european football uh, federation you know uh, uh, they approach the ff for the you know again for the for youth team friendlies or tournament or something and again their their approach was never heard properly because you as you told you know there were people in between who don't want to who want to work with their own interest first not the national team interest first yeah so go ahead you're telling you know with stefan and you're planning the schedule yeah, see i worked with stefan when he was but then the problem i can tell you we were never structured as an organization so therefore it's all impromptu things yeah and you are not empowered also you are not yeah. reacting aap pehle react nahi kar rahe ho cheeze ho rahi hai then you are reacting right kis ab world cup qualifiers aa gaye tab aap soch rahe ho acha main friendly organize kar leta hu hum pehle se react nahi kar rahe ho ki hone wala hai hum kya karte hain ki hum coaches ko bahut kuch de dete hain और अपने पास हम कम रखते हैं क्योंकि हमें बहुत कुछ से क्या मतलब क्या ये फाइनेंशियल पावर है नहीं, या नहीं, टीम टीम पावर पावर नहीं, पावर नहीं, कर रहे हमारी प्लानिंग हमारी जो स्ट्रेटेजी सी को वो उनका लिमिट होना चाहिए कि आप गेम स्ट्रेटेजी आप किस टीम से खेलना चाहते हो कब खेलना चाहते हो किस इन, किस फेज पे खेलना चाहते हो किस से वो ठीक है लेकिन वो डिक्टेट नहीं कर सकते आपको कि सारी जो नेशनल टीम डेवलपमेंट प्लान है वो क्या होना चाहिए क्योंकि दे आर देयर फॉर अ शॉर्ट टर्म यू नो वी आर हियर फॉर लॉन्ग टर्म या इंडिया शुड नो कि हमें 2030 में कहाँ पहुंचना है उनको इनी, उसको मतलब नहीं है क्योंकि वो उनको पता है कि हमें अगला मैच जीतना है उनको ये मतलब नहीं है कि हमें वर्ल्ड कप पहुंचना है कोचेस विल बी जज ऑलवेज ऑन द रिजल्ट्स दे विल नॉट जज ऑन द से आउटकम ऑफ द 10 इयर्स प्लान और 7 इयर प्लान दे आर नॉट देयर फॉर आई थिंक टेक्निकल डायरेक्टर्स आर देयर फॉर रॉब बहन करके भी आए थे बाद में आई थिंक आई रियली लाइक दिस वर्क द डॉक्यूमेंटेड व्हाटएवर ही प्रपोज्ड और फैंटास्टिक आई एम नॉट श्योर हाउ मच ऑफ दैट इंप्लीमेंटेड आई थिंक यू श्योर यू हैव रेड द लक्ष्य 2022 एंड वी आर सिटिंग इन 2022 दैट हैज लॉन्च्ड 10 इयर्स अगो I'm not sure uh, even 30% of that document have been implemented by the federations not just national but he, he provided he requested the state federation to also the leagues and everything so i think that's where and i totally agree that coach should not have all the power and considering our uh, present coach till the september of the month has done that uh, couple of press conference using again in between influence of people to organize the press conference and tell that you know i need this 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 league to which happened this my player should play i i am we speak up will speak about it but how much you agree with that you know that main jo player select kar raha hu national team mein club mein khelna chahiye nahi dekhiye ye immaturity dikhati hai kyunki dekho aap kis system mein jaake aa ye bol sakte ho ki dekho agar national team ka player hai wo agar uske paas game time nahi hai to wo to national team mein aa hi nahi sakta तो ये यूरोप में हम लोग सुनते हैं बिकॉज टू गिव एन एग्जाम्पल आप कोई भी टॉप नेशन है अभी आप यू नो आप नेदरलैंड की टीम देख लीजिए लुई मैनाल एक दो प्लेयर्स को नहीं सिलेक्ट किया तो ही इज़ गिवन ही इज़ नॉट प्लेइंग दिक्कत लेवल आई कैन कॉल हिम राइट तो यहाँ पे थोड़ा उल्टा है कि जो प्लेयर हम कॉल करेंगे हमारे कोच कॉल अप देंगे उनको देश शुड प्ले एट दिक्कत सो विल टॉक अबाउट द नेशनल टीम सी आर सी नारो विट लेटर ऑन ऑन दिस पॉडकास्ट सो देन यू वर्क फॉर फाइव ईयर्स विद ए एफ एफ आई थिंक टिल बॉब हॉटन केम on board yeah or? yeah with bob houghton i worked yes, okay yes and uh, how was experience stephen bob houghton i think you worked with sukinder singh also yes, yes. uh, in chandigarh football academy of course yeah. work yes, so how was experience also. three typical different type of coaches which with coach you love to work with most See, and, and why like the yeah it's a great experience you know working with the national team head coaches and also all those players uh like i uh, stephen definitely bob sukwinder naimuddin pk banerji and then all sets of youth coaches uh all have their own way of working and they all uh, as i said when you don't have a structure where you don't have that organizational uh, aspect which is not institutional so everybody works with their own way yeah and uh, i think most like indian coaches definitely you know they are more engaged more involved with players uh, and they have different approach um, overall i would say bob was better organized he had a great command in everything what he had. and he was uh, like uh, very sure what he wants and he he was very practical in terms of his tactics also and uh, he was very straightforward uh and i really learned a lot from him yeah but uh, definitely all others also 
but i had longest stint working with bob and uh, he is very straight forward person and he was uh, and he knew the players well uh, their strength and he will you know use the player to their strength and that's how we could achieve our qualification to uh, afc asia cup in 2008 after the gap of uh, those 24 years and uh, uh, also to be point to be noted 2011 asia cup was 16 team asia cup yes. uh, currently the asia cup which we qualified in 2019 and which we qualified now for 2020 2023 is 24 team asia cup so that's a major difference to uh, between the qualification scenario of the both the asia cup 16 team asia cup was very tough to qualify and yes. of course afc challenge cup was kind of backdoor entries for the developing countries like india but yes. those matches i remember Uh, took place in Hyderabad and Delhi, and final was in Delhi. You know, and those matches were not easy to win. By the way, it's don't there was no easy uh, pathway given to you to qualify for the AFC Asian Cup. So I think uh, that itself was a great, great achievement. And I think I have I had a chat with uh, players who have worked with uh, you know same similar kind of coaches. Uh, I think they rate Bob Horton a lot, uh, and I was also surprised in 2011 when his stint was cut short. And I think I've seen this whenever a foreign coach start doing a bit better. I think he's always Not given the new contract, or he's not, you know, he's asked to leave. That happened with Bob Horton. But in the similar time, then you left AFF in 2000. Yeah, I left 2009. And uh, I think should I say from uh, Kerala, which city, which place were in Kerala, by the way? Ah, um, uh, it's uh, Nornad. Nornad to Kolkata yeah. to Bengal to Gwalior to Chandigarh to Delhi. No, now go to Goa, then to Delhi. To Delhi now to you can say Switzerland. You went to FIFA, so. that when this how this fifa move happened to you i think uh, that's the highest a uh, indian can reach in terms of the uh, you know not as the executive committee member or something this is a proper you know job as such uh, which you can get so how that move happened to you and i think uh, was that post before also or it just came when you when you you know were you around no uh, it happened when i left uh, aff 2009 and then i was working as a consultant freelancer and then in between i started a company also uh, and this uh, opportunity i got in 2011 this post was uh, headed by manilal fernando from sri lanka who was the president and he was a uh, the executive com- uh, vice president of uh, asian football confederation <laughs> so it was a big shoe for me to enter and uh, this just you know it happened and in it's like a instinct work for me it's not that this position was advertised or nothing but then you know, like i when once i left aff my plan was never to be back in the federation or association work. Yeah. no not in the association work yeah uh, but like you know it's always that's a destiny you can say you know it happens and uh, i was going through a phase where Okay, and this just came, and then I moved to uh, you know two two trips to Switzerland. You know they agreed very fast, and October I started uh, working. Two thousand eleven October I started working for FIFA, uh, and then this was a transition where the earlier uh, development officer from Sri Lanka was still there, but then you know then I was given the role, and then you know three months we kind of he handed over the charge to me, yeah. So this is the time also I think when the football house was built I think it was built in 2007 right uh, No it was it was built uh, uh, starting from 2002 and I was the first person to move in 2005 from Goa to Delhi Delhi yeah. and uh, this was officially inaugurated in, in 2007 when Blatter came Blatter, to yes. came to India and uh, when you joined FIFA you used to sit from football house only No no see we had a office in Dwarka itself uh, independent office and we had other staff also where the technical development officer was there and then uh, we had an uh, IT project which is a FIFA connect project we had somebody and then administrative staff so how so many the, how many people were there yeah, in the team yeah the four four people four people and uh, i think uh, of course during this phase lots of FIFA projects came to India. Yes, uh, yes. Major, of course, being FIFA under 17 in 2017. But I will come back because uh, that's the phase also for me when I get into Indian football, get my groove into, and I remember each and every project very, very, uh, very, very carefully and f- to full. I think few of projects I want to touch upon uh, the rebuild of Cooperage Stadium, Bombay. 
uh, I'm surprised that nothing has happened since then. It is same which FIFA has done. Uh, if you remember, another there were regional football academies open with FIFA fund in yes. India. Uh, there was a uh, there was a regional academy, FF academy at Kolkata, Bombay, Bangalore, and there's a uh, one the um, what is what are they called AFF uh, final academy or uh, the main academy in Goa uh, where the under 90 team used to be placed. So I just forgot the technical name for it. So these were the my favorites. Uh, people talk about under 70, but these are the favorite projects. So uh, can you touch upon these? Uh, what is the role into these? You know. How much was FIFA saying that you want to open the academies or you want to do rebuild the Cupid Stadium or you as a, um, you know, head of regional development officer uh, recommending them that you should do this or how much of AFF role into it that, you know, uh, we want funds to do Cupid Stadium or to the get the AstroTurf to say various other pitches in India, which FIFA under FIFA development goal projects, I think it, it was known as came. So, can you tell about uh, how these things happened and what your role behind these? Yeah, see, like uh, if somebody does an analysis that five years, uh, five and a half years when I was part of uh, FIFA, I think uh, India got the maximum projects uh, in every way, uh, not only infra, uh, soft projects uh, and whatever. And the World Cup which came to India, that was part of that strategy itself that India has great potential, nobody doubts that. But then we need it something which really takes football uh, to a different level uh, and engages all the stakeholders. And that way, uh, the World Cup was the part of the strategy. It was given in 2013, by the way, to the India. Yeah, it see, it, it, the discussion started to 2011. Yeah. And finally, the December 2013, the decision was taken. But then, if, since I joined, we knew, you know, this is going to happen. And, and I and that's what uh, the people who are Indian football uh, very seriously involved. Uh, I'll say I was one of them. We also knew beforehand that this World Cup will be given to India. It was very. It was getting build up, build up, build up, and officially it came in December. But I think by the time June and July came of 2013. We were aware that, you know, we, we started drawing the logos for the World Cup. There were lots of, uh, you know, graphic designer. Who, of course, that time the social media was not that huge. Currently, people are doing for, of course, they have their own gain. But that's some people used to do for their passion, you know. And I remember there were at least before the official logo came, official announcement, there were five or six great logos for the Under-17 World Cup by the fans on the internet. Of course, the, the, the people were limited that time. So I think people are aware that India will get that World Cup because it was slowly, slowly getting built up. You know, I think I remember Blatter also came in 2012, uh, if yes. I remember correctly, to India. And that time, I think he also gave the statement, you know, we're thinking to bring a uh, youth World Cup to India. And of course, we are not told the addition, but I think by the time we, 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 we figured out it's only 2017, World Cup. But World Cup is, of course, a major project, which is we should speak separately. Uh, but what are the other projects, you know, yeah, the, see, the, the, there was the, the regional pitches, in, I remember yes. in Cooperage, yes. Shillong. Mizoram, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, these pitches were given under FIFA goal projects and I think since then it stopped. No, what I'll tell you, we the FIFA granted India a project called Win in India with India uh, with uh, 10 million worth of uh, value. And that project was struck uh, for a few years. Then when I joined, like we fully activated all that money. Uh, like we, uh, because normally what happens if you don't use the money, it lapses. But uh, I made sure that whatever that fund available, we should make best use of it because it belongs to India and we must not uh, stop. So we did pro you know, projects uh, like Cooperage complete renovation. Yeah, that's I remember. Uh, the biggest project. And since then, and, nothing has happened on that and stadium. See, from the artificial turf to the, to stands, the stand to, to the, the lights. lights. Yeah, and also all the changing rooms, the offices, like it completely given a new life, which uh, like I know how much. It's a historical stadium, by the way, people are yeah. not aware of it. It's a very historical stadium, just like a Ambedkar Stadium in Delhi, just like on the Salt Lake Stadium in Kolkata. Cooperage has its own prestige and history people should be aware of. Yeah, and uh, this project uh, was not easy, but we could make it, make it happen. And see, it transformed because the the time that project got you know initiated and by it finished see the whole uh, the uh, the energy uh, and uh, the football environment at that cooperage just like you know uh, 
like a freshness came in there and that become a very center point for f- football in mumbai and also in maharashtra that was the value it created and uh, it was uh, you know many contractors were involved and uh, it was uh, there were legal challenges also so because the societies around the societies there. around they are very influential bureaucrats they have put uh, cases against uh, any construction but then oh we could pass through all that and well, wonderful and then we did project in bangalore uh, bangalore, bangalore we built a, stadium, we, yeah. not only the artificial turf we also built a training center the whole uh, academy and the jsw which they use the whole structure was built under fifa grant project and that was a gold project and then we added with top up with the win india project and then we did shillong Manipur Mizuram. Goa we did two yeah, yeah? and then then we also did in Kochi and also in Calcutta uh, Calcutta Barasat is done under that project so there was this is you know kind of a uh, like never happened and we could finish everything and it was a great gift to India and uh, to and this is all part of the whole you know big strategy and then Uh, we also did a soft project like to create a change manage you know what do we call it uh, a change in management philosophy the work culture professionalism we call that uh, at that time the project name was called uh, performance what performance means we come in as a fifa team where we completely uh, do an audit of the organization not only as a aff but we go down to the clubs to the association everyone and then we give our suggestions uh, to the federation that this all need to be done uh, that way you will be able to you know, change things from in every aspect so we did that project also where uh, then we also started funding some of the state associations in terms of manpower uh, all that but uh and then we also did an audit performance audit of the hr uh in the organization in aff saying that okay then kpmg was involved by us we given them a maybe a 300 400 page report these are the gaps this need to be because we wanted to make sure that the organization runs in full capacity and it really performs uh to its best and their uh, and the value uh, what uh, you know with world cup we are organi- organizing every you are building a capacity of the system and that way football can really reach to you know change the image in india so that was the idea yeah that was the plan and then the mizoram project uh, i kick started now happy to see that you know just got inaugurated few months back It was that time and the land it could have happened before but then there was a land issue in terms of the but agreement and all the one huh? thing which i noticed of course those five years i remember 22 2012 to 2017 these many projects and this is not something which you told me i am aware of it because i've seen these projects very closely as i told i was started getting involved in indian football in those years only but i feel that pace has been now slowed down uh, there are not many projects anymore uh so there are two things i want to speak about is it just because you are indian or you're just doing for india or you have done something very similar for say nepal bhutan bangladesh sri lanka maldives because this is also very important because if we have fans from nepal and maldives also watching these channel or even from pakistan so also important for them to understand the what the role of the regional officer this is of course india india and of course your love for indian football and everything but i think as a neutral i should ask that what was done for the other reason also yes very good question ashish uh, like before i move to other countries i just want to finish one part which is very important for the first time india came out with strategic plan was 2015 uh, october uh, 12 or 15 the fifa general secretary flew down to launch that therefore for the first time india had a four year plan and yeah i remember we, i have seen that uh, yeah and the idea was that okay you know, put something and to achieve also and we were trying to build the capacity for that to achieve so therefore you know, so we could do lot of things and also we started the grassroots as well so the the focus was everywhere so yeah now moving to the south asian and also the central asian countries like 
we could do many projects in sri lanka even pakistan i've been there once many times i could not travel because of the visa uh, but then they were also very proactive we could do lot of projects uh, in pakistan you know say in uh, many provinces in pakistan uh, even in bangladesh even in maldives uh bhutan bhutan was like a revolution yeah bhutan i also like the first project Thimpu happened Stadium. in the thimpu that become a center of attraction for the entire bhutanese because even the new couple you know they will come you know to be there to and photo that and that changed and that stadium was used by the national team the clubs in the fc cup and, and everything you and know and you won't believe that one project of us changed the infrastructural uh, landscape Uh, to uh, they are better uh, having infrastructure compared to india now because if you see per capita uh, per pitch you know bhutan has got more pitches more astro pitch, uh, pitches uh, per 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 thousand people uh, per or maybe you can call it per thousand players than india and uh, it's it's a different world now because that has given them the encouragement because of the fifa in- involvement and we were very proactive so there were wherever i could do you know i never taken say as you know i am indian because i have to focus more no i have given equal focus because at the end i am a professional so there and they all everybody wanted the maximum so whoever you know whatever way we could help them we have helped them and i worked Uh, if if i am doing a project in bhutan i worked as a bhutanese you know like uh, if i am doing in india i am working as an indian so like for you know i share good relationship with all of these countries uh, and even the central asian we could do lot of projects there were problems initially you know governance issues but then by the end like the best country i worked was tajikistan, tajikistan yeah. like how it transformed and we could do lot like the similar approach was there in tajikistan and india yeah but tajikistan had more many more challenges uh, commercially they are not there but you see you know the they difference they have ticked off now i can say like that. they have maybe 100th of resources of what india has got see where they have moved and you know, that really gives me that happiness but at the end you know wherever you put your because see in this jobs you are not doing job basically i never felt that i am working because at the end you are involved and you want to see the outcome and even say afghanistan say i we did many projects like even indoor stadium you know many turfs in herald uh, kabul many soft projects you know we started lot of things and we could see the change because of fifa nobody even went to uh, kabul or afghanistan before me yeah i used to travel 3 4 times a year and they got and that's why we could do many projects there and that changed even women started playing football yeah the afghanistan so women's team so many team started yeah team, so yeah. many things we could do so there were i never worked you know anywhere like this was a great experience and i would never and nobody can even point out i was not actually being pointing being an, just being an indian like, like i was biased that have, yeah but that's I the thing by, yeah. i am aware of these uh, i just wanted to let people you know know also that you know what you have done for the same let's let's talk about the marketing now fifa under 17 world cup i think not just for india so south asia was the marquee market tournament uh uh and we know all about the world cup and everything i think don't want to go again and again Uh, do you think the the reason the world cup was brought to india uh, it got justified at the end of the tournament or the post the tournament well, if you ask me a very frank opinion uh, i think we could only achieve 10% of what, what we could have achieved yeah yeah see the best legacy of hosting a world cup for india like country uh, you know, i wanted to see the next edition indian team qualifies Qualified. for the world cup and if that has not achieved that has not happened and i think uh, it's world cup is still very far we didn't qualify for the afc under 19 championship with the same players so i think uh, i always said the pathway for these players are always missing when you're 17 and 18 in europe you start playing club football at the professional level are players still struggling for playing time they're not sure they're at the national team camps long camps I think they should be allowed to go and play for the clubs, you know, and club should be happily give the top talents a chance. And if say club like Manchester United, Barcelona can give, 
I think Indian club should be able to. And this pathway is always missing. And uh, that's the national team is one thing. I'm always very critical of the World Cup batch, and I've seen those kids very closely. Know know them very personal. I can't be that critical in by taking names, but I think they could have achieved more. Some of them didn't have the ambitions to go. You know, uh, no, to go I to think, the next level. Yeah, Ashish, uh, the important thing is, see, it is not the players. You know, they wherever they are, how they are, and it is a system. It's a more of an ecosystem. Yeah, because see, if the players had got a better opportunity, a system, they could have been in somewhere else. Yeah, like the intensity, the volume with which they traveled, the exposure, where you haven't seen below them. Yeah, and the problem is, see, we are doing all these shortcuts. See, we can't do these shortcuts. Like, say, you you had a special project where you might have invested thirty, forty crores on them, but this is not the way to build, you know, country's football what team. What after next? What after them? Yeah. And one so, more thing I want to say is that on pay man, let's not assume the amount. On pay, we have X amount spent on that batch, pe, right? The previous batches or the batches after them were spent very less money compared to them. And where are all our these kids are into ISL and I League only? So there is no the kind of budget was uh, put in into FIFA under 17 batch players, coaches, and everything. They those players should be not in in India right now. No, see because I, that kind of exposure they got, you know, from very early age, 13, no, 14, the, they started getting the exposure. Actually, the problem is that what I said. Oh, we are working with the short term goals. See, they were only been. Training, you know, they got exposure. Thinking only the World under seventeen World Cup. No, see that should not never happen. See what is required. Still, we have that gap. See our fifteen year old, fourteen year old, thirteen year old, sixteen year old. How many games they play? There, there is no no games for them. You see, we cannot develop our football concentrating on forty players. We need. No, four thousand to forty thousand players in this age everywhere. They should play, and that's how the clubs will also start engaging the youth players. See, when you know we are making these shortcuts, so what happens? You are disconnecting that age group, those who are not part of this team. They feel, they think, the players themselves think, oh, we cannot reach anywhere. Those late developers. Oh, and see, these players, those who come into the team, it's not necessary that they will end up, you know, be the best. Only you know somebody else will come up end up. Like we always is a great example. Yeah, but yeah. we always thought we'll get that one or two player who will you know take the legacy, take the Indian football up ahead. But I'm not sure what has happened. That's of course from the uh, national team and the players department. Let me twist the question now. In terms of the infrastructure, the kind of money was spent—not just the FIFA, not just the CF, not Indian government taxpayer money—to build those five training, four training pitches were there every centers uh, wherever the World Cup took place: uh, Delhi, uh, Kolkata, Kochi, uh, Goa, oh. Mumbai. Four; these were the centers. Calcutta and Guwahati. Guwahati. These were the centers. At least four training pitches were prepared, right? Everywhere, money was spent. It was made to the level of the say other World Cup venues, uh, youth cup World Cups. What happened to those pitches now? Uh, See, so what's the, that's the main major? I always said, under seventeen World Cup, we might not get players. We should have got this infrastructure in place. We should being able to use that infrastructure now. I'm not sure. Are we using uh, even fifty percent of the infrastructure was built for the under seventeen World Cup? See the the infrastructure, as per legacy is concerned, uh, is is one of the best. Yeah, and that has really given. Uh, you know a better facility for players and these facilities you know, all are all are being used whether maybe isl teams or maybe the local so that way infrastructure investment has not gone waste but my problem is that we could we could have used to its optimum yeah it's two examples so with a good with a good delhi, plan delhi has a four pitches uh, are those four pitches with the football delhi right now as a state federation only two only two so if you given you can could do more right so if government is already spend money or if a federation as a federation should have been taken that active role make sure all those 
uh, five pitches at each center. These are twenty pitches, I think, all all across India. No, twenty-four. Twenty-four pitches all across India. If those twenty-four pitches could have been acquired on long-term lease or something to the state federation, to the national federation, we could have definitely used more. And I'm sure uh, Delhi, just like Delhi, the other centers where not all the pitches are used. Yeah, of course, with ISLR, ISL teams are there. They're using it, but still. I think it's more of a grassroots where I want these pitches to be used. If ISL team need pitches, they can build their own, right? If they're spending twenty uh, twenty crore rupees in in terms of salaries, of course they can build pitches. They don't need FIFA or AFC or central government pitches, I think. And these pitches should have been used more in the grassroots development. And I'm not sure they are used at the grassroots development at this time uh, as we're speaking right now. I'm few of them might be used, but that's the major another. You know, uh, uh, complaint I have of the FIFA Under Seventeen World Cup legacy, as we talk about. Of course, there was major, f- and there were lots of positives. And uh, because we didn't start with the positive, because I felt that you know, I felt that uh, we have, and you have, and many have already have spoken about it. The kind of culture shift it brought uh, to the Indian football, the kind of world coverage it brought to the Indian football, uh, the kind of uh, players. Of course, we all about Phil Foden and all everybody is playing in Kolkata, so that also brought the attraction. Of the you know world scout, uh, but ultimately we didn't get anything from it. Our player didn't went outside. Um, our pitches are not used properly. Of course, now we are hosting another FIFA World Cup for the girls. Uh, do you feel that we have learned from our mistakes and uh, can we achieve more than ten percent this time around? Later, later part of this year. No, see uh, the women's World Cup. What we will be hosting, no doubt, it will be as successful as. The under seventeen uh, FIFA World Cup in twenty seventeen. As far as organization is concerned, it was really great, and that way, you know, we have captured uh, the confidence of the world that we can host big events. But uh, the women's team, this under seventeen girls, you know, they are one tenth ready. Compared they are they are no way ready because they were not supposed to be playing this right. We were yes. hosting the previous edition, 2020. That batch was providing the exposure and everything, and of course the world was going through challenging times and nobody thought that you know COVID will postpone two edition of it. And uh, I think in terms of performance, we should not be accepting anything. But again, the boys didn't win anything. They didn't got yes. anything. So anything these girls can get, even they can score more than one goal. I think itself will be a greater achievement than the boys have done at 2017. Yeah, but, uh, The 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 group they are, you know, USA, Brazil, and Morocco. You know, also, you know, they are not the easiest side I mean, to Brazil get. And Brazil yeah. uh, and USA, USA, of course, the yes. best team in the women's football. And both Brazil and USA have the one of the best campaign in the qualifiers to this World Cup. So I think I think, but I think I think hope that um, uh, this World Cup. A women's World Cup will change and bring women's league to the long run. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Need what? youth leagues for the girls, which no. is not there. See, hundred percent. What will happen with this World Cup is more and more girls will play, and they. I am sure, uh, as part of the legacy, or more youth leagues will come at local level, at the regional level, and at the national level. And what we need is to increase the playing population and playing time. And more competitive environment for a better competitive environment for girls, and that way our girls, you know, they are in terms of ranking, they are much ahead uh, compared to the men's team. But uh, we have you know a better chance to be you know top six in Asia, maybe in five years time. Uh, that is quite possible. But for that to happen, we need to really increase the participation base and. Put a competitive structure, uh, whereby we can really challenge uh, the top six in Asia. And I have been very realistic of the girls. I people compare the FIFA rankings and the Asia ranking, but we have to see also in women's football at uh, Asia level. There is huge difference between level one and level two. Level two, which India is in, and level three. India generally play teams between level three, level two. We hardly play level one. When we play level one. Teams we lose seven zero eight zero, so there is a huge difference. Unlike men's, men still is very competitive between level two and three. Of course, one is tire apart, but two and three is a competition. So that's that's people don't see because we don't play much. Absolutely, we don't have many games. Yeah. You know, we, when we play qualifiers, we lose badly. You know, Olympic qualifiers, the World Cup qualifiers. So there is nothing to uh, judge. But again, as I said, I have huge respect because. 
they don't even have one tenth of the resources as the men's or the boys have. They don't have the league and the, the youth teams and the youth leagues. So of course, what they're doing with the limited resources, I think it's great. And hopefully, this um, uh, under 17 girls World Cup will be more successful than the under 17 World Cup boys in 2017. And, and as I said, 10 percent of you know expectation uh, was achieved with its uh, 2017 edition. Hopefully, we'll at least achieve more than 10% in terms of infrastructure, in terms of the organization, in terms of the player performance and everything. And I think I hope my only, because the batches we can prepare, players we can prepare. Infrastructure is the toughest, one of the biggest challenge in the football in the developing countries like India. If we are building the infrastructure. I need somebody to take care of that infrastructure. You know, even if assigned to some ISL team, lease them out, let them maintain it, you know, at least the infrastructure will be kind of, you know, uh, put in use. Right now, uh, I felt, you know, uh, of course, ISL team can build their own infrastructure, but say if nobody is using it, let ISL team use it. But I think, I think it will be great if can grassroots centers can be opened. Uh, not the competitive grassroots center, even people who want to play football for their hobbies, you know, if they can open uh, governments, state government can be used to hire these coaches, you know. And I think these projects, these kind of projects have been implemented in some states. Goa is, of course, one example of uh, where GDA, GD, uh, Goa Development Football Authority is there who do this. Uh, there is Taluka in Goa, where every Taluka has a football coach who do the football coaching. I have seen that, that thing very closely also. So I think that's another learning for the Indian state governments. And, but again, state government will not do itself. How much the role of the state federation? come into it. We'll speak about that because you're already part of the state federation as a president of Football Delhi. Uh, but I think before that, I would just want to touch upon your book. Uh, your journey kind of, you know, uh, took a station, took a halt in the FIFA Under-17 World Cup time when you also decided to, you know, not continue with FIFA. Then your book came uh, back to the roots. Uh, and uh, I think one of the highest selling book in Indian football, I can, I, I can say that. And uh, uh, I hope you remember your part of that launching event also in Delhi. So, uh, tell about the the reason behind, you know, penning your thoughts uh, in that book. And uh, I think that book is available in the market. So, what people who have not read it uh, till now, uh, what they can hope and what they can get from that book. Uh, like, uh, we all have great movements from that launch. Uh, we could see all the greats of Indian football and Kerala was very and much of course, part of And of course, the great uh, Novi Kapadia, late Novi Kapadia was also there. And we had a great session with him. And I think one of the legendary uh, Indian football figure, you can say, who has himself, he has, uh, you know, taken Indian football forward, you know, the, the kind of effort he has put in, if he can put half the effort he has put in his life, I think football will be at a different place right now. Absolutely. Uh, we miss you Novi know, Kapadia. He's been a great, great, you know, uh, what do you say, uh, like a philosopher and a guide to Indian football who is like, who knew everything, what was the problem and he need, he also had the prescription. Uh, wherever he is, I'm sure he will find one day Indian football what, where he wanted to see. Uh, but then the book, uh, yeah, this, uh, I always wanted to write a book since I completed my PhD. Uh, my earlier plan was to write on Indian football, the, the, my learning, my experiences. But then I started it uh, in say somewhere in 2007 when I was working with the IFF. Uh, but uh, then I didn't have the motivation. I left halfway. I thought, no, no, this, this is still not the right time. Then I completely forgotten about it. But then when I started working with FIFA, uh, you know, traveling many parts of the globe and uh, what I've realized is uh, like, uh, you know, football still has lot to, you know, grow, you know, wherever. It's not that, you know, whether it's Brazil or Argentina or, you know, in countries in Asia, those who are like in India, like or China where football is still not the number one sport. Uh, what I realized that every country has got, you know, still a lot of scope to improve and bring in the right. And what I found was the grassroots uh, was one of the major areas which is still not structured, organized that way it should be. So then, you know, I, 2015, I started, you know, writing about it. And this is all about my experiences my own uh, learning from uh, different uh, doing things yeah because i being a coach i being a you know uh, handling projects and 
done you know more than 300 plus projects in my life uh, uh, while writing this book so therefore uh, I did research I did put up then my idea was okay I wanted to give something back because you cannot interact with every person because I keep getting messages you know we are doing this project how can you support how can you help how can you guide all that so then I thought okay let's write a book and which can be of use not only in India but across the world and I'm really happy that this book is there in every country in Asia at least yeah and uh, you know people I still get messages like is I feel like oh yesterday only I wrote like that you know because it gives a great feedback which uh, I never expected that okay I'll get that kind of feedback because uh, you know I, this is all my experiences I put but then good people are using it and I feel even if it is you know one person who is uh, you know getting uh, value out of it you know it's it's very good you know and that is uh, what my whole idea was okay let's pass on the knowledge uh, and uh, which uh, uh, you know, whoever is investing into football uh, they should be able at the end uh, they should get better value out of it and that was the whole idea and uh, it's really you know I could I'm very satisfied and uh, yeah if if I have the opportunity to write again yeah, I'll definitely want to write again because I love writing but then the problem is now the time yeah, and uh, I don't get that kind of free time to write but and I also don't want somebody else to write for me there are people who say I'll write but then I never you know it doesn't come out as I am writing so that way yeah let's see when I will have another opportunity to write something and this time I'll specifically focus on Indian football uh, I think this very this episode has been very big now hopefully I think we'll have to sit down and see that how we can put it maybe we'll put it in parts uh, but a very big, big thank you to Saji for joining here today at uh, KNTV Studios. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you again, maybe in future. Uh, to our fans, don't forget you can listen to all our episode of the Beyond the Score podcast um, at your leisure on Spotify, iTunes, Geo Savan, Ghana and all other major platforms including Amazon Music also. Also, you can watch them on the video form on Khelnao's YouTube channel which is Khelnao TV. Until the next time, uh, this is your host Ashish Negi signing off. Thank you. We'll see you again in the next episode.